Hi, I'm Nate Simpson, Creative Director for KSB2, and welcome to another installment of our Dev Chat. Is it a series now? I think it might be. The last one was pretty popular. Uh, people liked the chat we had with more talk about reentry effects, so we're going to do another one. And today we're going to talk about a very popular topic in the community right now, wobbly rockets. Uh, so today we're going to talk with David Trigger Tregoning, one of our senior engineers. Uh, why don't we see what he has to say? Hey, David. Nice to talk to you. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Nate. How are you? Pretty good. Do you want to talk at all about who you are and what you do on this project? My name is David Trigoning. Most people know me as Trigger AU or Trigger. Um, and on this project, KSP2, I've been working for a couple of years uh, around the engineering space, um, but I have a little bit of history, which some people may know. So I'd, I've worked on the KSP franchise for about 10 years, starting in QA and then moving on to do engineering work on KSP1 in squad and then transitioning to, to KSP2, which is what we were talking about now. So Wobbly Rockets, obviously a hot topic right now. And I think, you know, as tempting as it would be to say, why don't we just flip the wobble switch so that they don't wobble anymore? What we're really talking about is a lot of interconnected systems with, you know, a lot of possible ways of addressing the issue. And there's a conversation to have around what is the desired behavior kind of at the end of the user experience. And then there are many, many parallel conversations going on about how to achieve that desired result. And so when people ask me, don't you care about wobbly rockets? Why hasn't this been fixed yet? I definitely care about wobbly rockets. It's very hard to get to orbit right now sometimes, and I would love for them not to be wobbling as much as they are. Um, what is your personal answer to this question, David? There's various things that can be done. Like you say, no, you can, you could turn off all the joints um, from a technical perspective, single rigid body, apply forces, all that kind of stuff. But you do lose some of that novelty. The scale of, of sort of, and the plans of, of KSP2 and Interstellar and how big these sort of vessels and would be and need to be for that realistic um, or semi-realistic physics experience, which is the other thing that I love about KSP is that sort of magical um, ability to to try and prove out your your own experience in space and challenge some of the things that that have gone on in the history of man. Really make that wobble start to to all the the joint behavior or the the sort of multi-part block building experience becomes much harder. Um, so what what we have been doing. Um, across a range of things is we've been doing things like comparative testing between KSP1 and KSP2. We've been looking at the PhysX engine itself and getting sort of the Unity engineers involved in you know, making sure what we're seeing is what we should be seeing. From a positive perspective, what we're seeing in the simulation is what happens when you apply these sort of large parts, mass differences, joints, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we, we're getting out what we should be getting out for the, the value there. but we are tipping the limits of, of where that can give us a stable, realistic simulation. Um, and it all comes at, that overlays with a, a balance on performance. So we could wind all the way up or we could give players the ability to wind all the way up how much physics is applied. And you would get this magical space simulation that's entirely accurate as if it was all jointed. And you'd get about half a frame a second and you'd, you'd have a great slideshow presentation of getting to space in four and a half days. You know, when, when I'm thinking about as a player of the game, what my common sense expectation might be for the behavior of the system. One thing I keep coming back to is if the structure itself appears to be unitary, let's just talk about like the central core of a rocket. Yeah. You know, when you think about the real world experience of building a rocket, you would expect all of those cylindrical elements to be part of a, a potentially milled out of the same piece of metal or at the very least welded quite well right mm. and um there is a common sense interpretation just a visual interpretation by which i expect certain things to flex and i expect certain things to be rigid um, and you know when when we talk about the central core of a rocket my experience tells me that unless it's under an, a humongous lateral load that you know it's it should be rigid at all times. Um, but then when I think about things like uh, a radial decoupler with a booster attached to it and no strut, I, I see that mass cantilevered out to the side hanging on a single point. And again, it seems uh, you, you know, intuitive to me that the, that the hmm. booster would bow outward, for example. If I stick a truss on the side of a vehicle sticking outward, um, 
while I expect the truss itself to remain rigid because this is a unitary structure. So if I had a bunch of trusses end to end, I would kind of want them to remain rigid, but where they attach to the side of the vehicle would be using a surface attached node rather than a stack attached node. And when we get into the world of surface attached nodes, it feels to me like there starts to be some interesting choices around, should that joint be completely rigid or should that joint have some flex in it? So that's the, those are the kinds of conversations that I think are going on maybe more on the design side of like, what do we want it to feel like? Hmm. And, and then of course, all of these questions are compounded both by the inclusion of colonies in upcoming updates and after that interstellar vessels, both of which can be incomparably larger than what we were seeing in, in the early days of early access. So whatever we build has to be massively scalable. Sounds like a very small problem to solve, Nate, the way you describe it. It's, it's very, uh, we could just say the, joint LOD, and... right? Uh, joint uh, LOD. I, I love Someone the Someone else is going to write level it. Someone of else detail, yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, just so just touching on what you're talking about, uh, talking about there from a player experience, that's that's the same thing I go through as I'm I'm sort of thinking about the problem as such that that we face. Um, and and yeah, the, the, the thing that comes back to my mind when we talk about that sort of the original sort of wobbliness and all that kind of stuff and where we are today like i i fully expect as a player too like a, a big stack fuel tank for example I, I would expect there to be no flex the the funniest part to me is always when you place a range of struts and a pot on top of it and you launch the vessel on it just concertinas which is the the same same behavior that we see with uh, robotic parts in ksp1 where you could make a, a chain out of hinges and that kind of stuff and the thing flails around like a a mad device, which is really good for making a centrifuge or, a, or all that kind of stuff, but not really what you want when you're trying to fly to space or go to another planet. So, um, yeah, the the things that we have, uh, we have been looking at, and we're we're really starting to dig into probably after we get through the, the orbital drift bit, um, and try and nail that one out of the way is is really, uh, I don't want to say LOD because that sort of <laughs> that, that gives the impression that it's sort of you know this magical system that's working out based on distance that's that's all that kind of stuff i mean that that may well be how you get a solution that does this kind of stuff um but even just just more simply looking at sort of where you would expect or where a player would expect that sort of flex to occur can help us to to pull down into the a, sort of a focus area uh, the other thing that comes into that conversation as well, of course, is that every time we have um, every joint we place into the physics simulation takes cost to resolve the joint when when forces are being applied and all that kind of stuff. So the old adage of add more joints and add more struts and add more boosters, even it's the greatest advice known to man, um, works, but it has a cost. Um, and so historically, that's that's been sort of not really a piece of the puzzle in some cases. And so with this, we're trying to really pair back to make sure that what we have is a performance solution. We have a good user experience and that kind of stuff. So in case P1, you had a vessel and it was packed or unpacked. And so unpacked meant you've got all your physics and away you go. Packed meant it's on rails and it's sort of nothing's going on. In case P2, there's actually three layers or three levels we can go to with that sort of behavior. So packed and unpacked is still physics rigid bodies, all that kind of stuff. But a packed vessel is a single rigid body with the forces applied. Um, and unpacked is the sort of traditional, every part has its own rigid body. And then we also have that sort of orbital state or at rest state where there's no rigid body physics and it's all going on. That's that's one of the levers that we're looking at as to sort of, let's imagine that we take a vessel and just make it a single rigid body. And we've been fiddling with some of that stuff, which requires things that need to be looked at. So for example, the, the wheels package that we use in Unity doesn't like sharing rigid bodies in some cases, or the way that it's been coded doesn't like sharing rigid bodies in some cases. So we're sort of pulling those apart so that we can be checking what does it look like for a player if it's one rigid body. So effectively, that means there's no joints, just one vessel all welded together and away you go. Um, so from a from a testing perspective, the thing flies dead straight. There's there's no wobble. There's no forces that kind of stuff. But there's no wobble. It's it's a rigid sort of block of stuff. It's like you're flying a, a house brick. There's, there is that thing of getting in between, and that's where like this level of detail idea comes comes into it. The areas we're sort of focusing that investigation or that digging at are more around the purpose of the part 
as opposed to like a distance. So if I think of a, a simple three-stage rocket that has boosters on the side and a, a, a sort of a upper stage and a lower stage, then the places that you would expect there to be more force or flex or the chance for a break due to torque or that kind of stuff is where the boosters are on the side of the main core and in between those sort of two stages where the decoupler is. Um, and so if we're okay with sort of taking out all of those other joints in between, what does that look like? How does it play? All that kind of stuff. All physics joint solvers have fun when you have large mass differentials between parts. And that is actually the one of the core things for why we see flex and wobble in, in sort of a physics simulation. And so this won't just simply changing the way those joints are laid out or where they exist doesn't necessarily remove that sort of, hold on a second, the, the booster weighs 100 tonnes and the core weighs half a tonne that's a mass ratio of 200 or so, that's massive from a physics solver perspective. But if there's less joints for it to solve, maybe it can converge those larger numbers and away you go. Yeah. That's the, There's bits in KSP2 where we have what's called a multi-joint, which is where the design can define that this part's attached nodes and surface nodes and that kind of stuff should apply multiple joints, which does add rigidity, does remove some of the flex, but it does have that cost uh, as we go. And there is also a somewhat of an auto strut system as well for things like wheels and things like that. So yeah, there, there's a whole range of tools and we're trying to, to work our way down to what the right experience one is that matches performance, matches, yeah, it's a great, great balancing act. One thing we'll probably want to keep in mind is that internally there may be a difference in the definition of wobbliness and joint flexibility, right? Wobbliness, how would you define it? Is it, is it un, uh, sort of unconstrained flexibility of all joints all the time <laughs> it's a really good it's a really good point that because you can the, well i was going to say the english language but language is a fun a fun thing you'd, you'd hope it was all defined i the the number of conversations that have happened internally inside intercept about the word landed and what that means is <laughs> is a, an insane sort of context is it an action a verb now yeah so from from a wobbliness perspective yeah, you, you could take this as thing. Some people will interpret wobbliness as I see flex on my boosters as they sort of take off. And that would be something people think is, or most people would sort of expect it to, to the point you made. But if the whole thing's like spaghetti, um, away you go and you're in a different ballpark. So the, the spaghetti option of wobbliness is certainly something that I don't think anybody's a fan of. Um, but the, the idea of having some level of realistic physics and movement and sort of joints not all being one massive rigid block of, of cement is something that is really both realistic and important in sort of planning and traveling for space, yeah. So so you mentioned auto strut and uh, it, it's interesting that you bring that up because I think a lot of people are asking themselves, well, if there is already auto strut functionality, could there not be some short-term, more expedient way of reducing the wobble issue and, and then, <clears throat> You know, the team can work on some uh, more nuanced, more scalable solution down the road. And I think that is a, a valid question to ask. My answer would be sort of twofold. Um, mm -hmm. First off, absolutely, that's a thing that we can investigate. Um, it, it, being able to fix things in the short term is always a good idea, but we're always making a, a sort of a, a bargain between uh, what has short-term utility and what is a, a sustainable solution to the problem. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've known for a long time that KSP1 solution to the wobbliness problem is Autostrut. And for mm -hmm. people who don't know, Autostrut essentially connects parts uh, via joints that are connected to either grandparent parts or the center of mass, or there's a lot of sort of iterations of it in, in the tweakables. But the general idea being that there's a lot of additional invisible joints that prevent parts of the rocket from, from wobbling. Um, and we don't view that as a sustainable solution, but it may be an effective solution for the short term. And that's the thing that we're looking into. But in the meantime, the, the juicy problem we're trying to solve is how do we do this elegantly? How do we do this performantly in a way that doesn't increase the number of joints? Because joints are, of course, you know, CPU intensive. Physics is a thing that sucks up cycles. Um, so anytime the solution is add a bunch more of the thing that is causing a performance issue, we're obviously a little bit circumspect. Did you want to add anything to that? I I think the the so the, the way you've described that, Nate, it's very, very cohesive and 
and and very much sort of where things are at uh from my perspective as well the the we have tried some of those things with adding extra struts adding extra joints adding extra joints apologies I'm, I'm blurring my words um the the trade off is always that something else is taking a hit um and with the the amount of stuff that's in the the frame at the moment from a sort of a planning perspective when we look at code and engineering and that kind of stuff um it, it is going to have a cost and it's going to trade off against something else the that doesn't mean that we can't do these things or we don't try so i mean i'm we mentioned, or I mentioned before, about sort of the idea of there's these sort of layers of packed and unpacked. So, the the packed method does get rid of all of the wobble. It works really great, has a lot less performance. But to implement that, there's a risk to all of the other systems that are relying on rigid bodies in a specific way, or that may not have necessarily considered this idea at the time, or all those kind of things. So, that there is a a trade off, like you say, of short term gain versus long term pain. In KSP2, there's the, the multi-joint setup, which is sort of a, it's more like a targeted auto strut, where it's like between these two parts, I want some extra joints to get some some rigidity. Um, and there is definitely a, a way where we could target the turn on auto strut for, for everything and that kind of stuff. But that would then require all of the testing, all of the proving out new problems, invariably new problems. No, no I'm yet to... I'm yet to write code myself or see somebody write code that works 100% the first time through. Um, so it invariably leads to to sort of that sort of layer. So we are definitely looking at all of these things, though. None of nothing's off the table when you you sort of consider solutions um, at front when you look at that sort of big picture of what the goal is for the the game and the user experience. Um, but at the moment, yeah, that's that's not. It doesn't appear to be a fix that would be a short term fix that would not cause long term pain later. It's a really good example of one of those everything's a trade off. Everything has pluses and minuses, and uh, and no no uh, decision we make is going to be universally beloved. And in those kinds of situations, I tend to default to the longer term, more sustainable solution, even if that means we kind of have to eat some vegetables in the short term. Yeah, and entirely. And if you look at I mean, if you if you draw on the past of KSP, it's it's the same story. Like the things that have succeeded in the the franchise in both games, most have been those things that were very looking towards the longer term as opposed to sort of tactical short term fixes. Um, yeah. Well, thank you very much, David, for giving us your time. Uh, I hope the weather's nice in Australia today. It's it's a lovely balmy low winter day where it's going to be grey and miserable, which you wouldn't hear from an Australian normally. No, thanks, Nate. It's been very good to talk to you as well. It's good to see you. Hope you enjoyed that chat with David as much as I did. That work is ongoing right now, so we should have some cool stuff to show you soon. In the meantime, enjoy these additional sneak peeks. He's working on wobbly walk, wobbly walkets, wobbly walkets. Here we go again. <laughs>